The following presentation is an analysis of the definition of the field of educational technology and represents the collaborative work of Diane Lawson, Laura Hamilton, and Jeremy Render. According to Januszewski and Melinda, educational technology is the study and ethical practice of facilitating learning and improving performance by creating, using, and managing appropriate technological processes and resources. Our goal is to define each of these components within this definition by examining the way they fit together and fit within a natural, educationally based hierarchy. At the very heart of the definition of educational technology is the concept of facilitating learning and improving performance. All of the steps that we take as educators should be done with the sole purpose of helping our students reach their academic potential. Educational technology is no exception and we must ensure that the implementation of technology in our classrooms is driven by the effort to facilitate genuine learning. It's only when this authentic learning occurs that we can readily see improvement in our students' performance. If facilitating student learning and improving student performance are not at the forefront of our minds, we've completely missed the mark of educational technology, according to Januszewski and Melinda. With facilitating student learning and improving student performance at the pinnacle of the hierarchy, other major components in Januszewski and Melinda's definition branch out to support this goal. These major branches include the study of educational technology, ethics, creating, using, management, technological processes, and technological resources. Within these major branches are even smaller applications that all play an important role in the goal of using educational technology to facilitate learning and improving performance. The acknowledgement that there is a true study of educational technology is fundamental to the implementation of technology in our classrooms because it emphasizes that the field is one worthy of distinction and merits recognition. According to the Association for Educational Communication and Technology, a study is information gathering and analysis beyond the traditional concepts of research. Ultimately, the study of educational technology refers to the research and goals that must be in place when using technology in the classroom. Within the study of educational technology, it is imperative that all initiatives are backed with sound research that corroborates the reasoning behind using the technology. In other words, technology cannot be used for the sake of using technology. When one conducts adequate research, they can ensure that the use of technology supports the idea of facilitating authentic learning and guarantee that the technology can be used with fidelity. In addition to the research that is a major component of studying educational technology, this branch also supports the notion of improving student performance by an emphasis on developing effective goals. By applying adequate study to the field of educational technology, one can ensure that they are establishing viable and realistic goals. These goals should ultimately prove an improvement in student performance. Without studying the field, one would lack the context in which to set these goals and the practice necessary to analyze goals that are set when using educational technology. The second major branch of educational technology is the concept of ethics and ethical practice. According to the AECT, ethics are not merely rules and expectations, but are a basis for practice. Because educational technology literally opens up a world of possibilities within the walls of our classrooms, we must be mindful that there are going to be ethical issues that must be addressed for our students and our teachers. There are a number of ethical issues that face students as they use various forms of educational technology in the classroom. With everything from unauthorized access, objectionable material, privacy, and safety, Students with regular access to technology are inundated with ethical decisions. Although these ethical issues may look very differently in the elementary classroom as opposed to the high school classroom or beyond, the fact is that students must be well educated in the basic components of digital citizenship if we want them to use technology ethically. Teachers must also face a variety of ethical issues when they make the commitment to using technology in the classroom. 
Technology, in many ways, can give them more control over the accountability measures that guide their classrooms, and teachers must be intentional in using this control ethically. Teachers must also remain focused and ensure that the technology in the classroom is being used to support those two major goals of facilitating learning and improving performance, and is not merely babysitting students. Doing so marks a commitment to their ethical duty to serve their students. Finally, teachers must ultimately be aware that they are the professional in the room and the responsibility of ethical use falls on their shoulders. As a result, we must move beyond lists of do's and don'ts and acceptable use policies and make sure that our teachers and students are aware and educated so that they can use technology effectively and ethically. The idea of creating, contained in the definition of educational technology, really bridges the gap between the teacher and student because technology naturally promotes a sense of creativity in both. Teachers can use technology to create lessons that help achieve those core values of facilitating learning and improving performance. By the same token, students can use technology in non-traditional ways to make creations that show this genuine learning and mark improved performance. When we think about creating in terms of the teacher, it really centers on the idea of instructional design. According to Isiaka, instructional design refers to the creation of authentic learning environments. There are a number of instructional design models that exist. One is the ADDIE model, which has become the traditional means of creating an e-learning classroom. Another is Merrill's Principle of Instruction, or MPI, which focuses on tasks created around real-world problems. Ultimately, the nature of instructional design within educational technology gives the teacher a framework to use as technology facilitates the creation of a course or an activity. All of the major instructional design models point to the use of problem-based learning. This idea of solving real-world problems corroborates the concept of creation because students can, and should be, using the technology to create these solutions. For example, if students are using concepts of science to try and prevent erosion on the playground, there are many forms of educational technology that could be used in the creation of that solution. They could take and maintain data using proper software on a the device. They could use a modeling program to design a product that could eliminate the problem. They could even use 3D printing to create that product and conduct authentic testing. When instructional design is intimately married with problem-based learning in the classroom, both teachers and students can effectively use educational technology for creations that truly show genuine learning and improve student performance. The idea of using educational technology really emphasizes a commitment to educational technology because it represents the culmination of prior research and true implementation. When we look at using in terms of technology in the classroom, we're agreeing that technology will become a naturally included element and not just a special occasion. For example, if we're using a one-to-one -one program at the elementary level, we have to be willing to accept the fact that losing the privilege of using a device is not an appropriate consequence because the technology is such an integral component of facilitating learning and improving performance. The Association for Educational Communication and Technology defines using as the point where the solution meets the problem. While this definition is a bit abstract, it really encompasses a dedication to using educational technology. For example, let's say a teacher is having trouble analyzing whether or not his or her students are having difficulty using research to make arguments. According to the SAMR model, which analyzes the idea of using technology to redefine lessons, Simply using a word processor instead of pencil and paper does not enhance the lesson and does not help bring a solution to the problem. Allowing the student to convey analytical thought through the use of multimedia tools in a presentation, however, redefines the lesson according to SAMR and help brings a solution to the problem. Students come to gain a better understanding of making a research-based argument and the teacher gains a clearer understanding of where his or her students are within that concept. This is critically important if we want educational technology to help us in our goal of facilitating student learning and improving performance. 
Interestingly enough, despite the newness that seems to be associated with using educational technology to redefine lessons and bring solutions to problems, the fact is that this idea is really rooted in timeless educational theories. One of the fundamental theories directly connected with educational technology is Vygotsky's idea of scaffolding and teaching in the zone of proximal development. Connecting back to the SAMR model, as a teacher begins to redefine their lessons with the enhancements provided by technology, they can naturally use this progression as a means of scaffolding their students and teaching in the zone of proximal development. As we will see later, using technology is a process, and this process of teaching how to actually use technology works hand in hand with this theory as well. Another educational theory on which educational technology is firmly rooted is that of constructivism. Constructing learning through authentic experiences is really the goal and effect of committing to the concepts of using technology for creation within a real-world context. In other words, when students use educational technology appropriately, they are learning through authentic experience. This is invaluable, again, to the goal of facilitating learning and improving our students' performance. Once educators commit to the use of educational technology, managing this technology becomes a very practical concern. In other words, one must determine what using the educational technology will truly look like in its regular use. There are really two major concerns when it comes to the management of technology, the systems in place and accountability. Management systems in terms of educational technology are a very broad topic that can mean very different things at very different levels. For example, in the elementary classroom, a management system can be something as simple as numbering devices to ensure that each student uses the same device regularly. At the high school level, it could be the consistent use of usernames and passwords. Beyond that, management systems can refer to the use of a learning management system, such as Blackboard or Canvas, that is directly connected to the instructional design model that the teacher has used to create their course. Regardless of how big or small, maintaining effective management systems is key if we want educational technology to facilitate student learning and improve performance. Managing educational technology also addresses the ethical idea of accountability. In other words, our management systems must ensure that both students and teachers are accountable for the ways in which technology is being used in our classrooms. For students, these systems can ensure appropriate use and caretaking of technology. For educators, these management systems can ensure that content is being delivered in a way that is guaranteed and viable. Management ultimately boils down to the idea that educational technology is being used with fidelity and does not compromise the goals of facilitating learning and improving performance. Technological processes and resources really address the planning that's involved once an educator introduces educational technology into the classroom. Without spending adequate time on the processes connected to implementing technology or becoming familiar with the vast amounts of resources available, Teachers and students will have a difficult time ensuring that their efforts will promote authentic learning and improve performance. Using educational technology in the classroom requires a commitment to embracing the processes involved. In other words, we cannot throw technology in the classroom and expect our teachers and students to immediately use it effectively. There are certain steps that must take place to ensure our teachers are comfortable with technology. For example, we cannot hand our teachers 3D pens and expect them to create meaningful lessons for our students without proper guidance and professional development. Furthermore, there are many steps that must be intentionally taught before students can use technology in a way that represents creativity. Again, if we wanted students to use 3D pens to show authentic learning and improve performance, there would have to have been prior lessons on small aspects such as how to load a filament or using proper technique and adequate practice doing both. These technological processes, though often overlooked, are critical to ensure the use of educational technology is effective. Educational technology is a field that is rapidly growing. As mentioned before, we must be willing to study the field in order to stay abreast of the changes that occur. With this change in growth, 
we've also seen a massive increase in the amount of technological resources that have become available for teachers and students. Both have access to so much more through the use of technology that it demands the intentional use of professional discernment. For example, teachers and students now have access to almost any primary source that exists through the increased digitization of these documents. However, both students and teachers must be aware of the methods of attaining these documents and use this professional discernment in doing so. Teachers may not want to use letters scanned in from the Sons of the Confederacy if they are wishing for their students to write an objective piece on the Civil War. Or, middle school students would not want to use the project of a second grader on Robert E. Lee if they were conducting a similar assignment. Ultimately, the amount of resources makes the intentional teaching of digital citizenship, discernment, and focus on ethics even more critical while simultaneously opening the door to endless possibilities. In conclusion, the field of educational technology is one that is vast and becoming a mainstay in the world of education. While there are many components that make up educational technology, it is abundantly clear that the central focus is that of facilitating authentic learning and increasing student performance. Each element of educational technology, while important in their own regard, should serve to support these two goals. Keeping this focus is the most effective way of implementing, promoting, and sustaining educational technology in our classrooms.